Sheikh, my question is, uh, in this day, in these uh, days, uh, we get exposed to a lot of debates, uh, uh, for, like with uh, non-Muslims and Muslims, like they debate each other about topics of Islam. So sometimes we get exposed to topics uh, which are uncommon or um, not uh, usual, and sometimes we uh, they're sensitive topics, right? So and then when we get exposed to these topics, we uh, get infected with like doubts uh, and. A lot of we find a lot of uh, not a lot of uh, du'as or sheikh uh, address these topics either. So how can we uh, overcome these doubts and uh, about uh, these uh, delicate topics of Islam? Wafiq barakallah. First of all, <clears throat> a rule of thumb: it is totally prohibited to watch debates or to engage in debates. Engaging in debates might. Huh, might be acceptable if you had proper knowledge, but it must not be public, regardless of what people do. Yes, it's interesting. Whoa, it's, it's like a boxing match, and he, this was a low blow. Oh, the sheikh, he, I don't know he's going to do this. And no, now he's retaliating. This is not a matching, uh, a boxing um, match. This is something related to Islam. Those involved in debates about atheism, about uh, this and that, they get exposure, they get attention, but they're sinful for what they're engaging in publicly. Why? When people debate, the intention is to divert as many Muslims as possible, not to reach the truth. I'm talking about public debates. So when Sheikh Ahmed did that, may Allah have mercy on his soul, had a debate with James Swaggart, he literally knocked him out with a KO. James Swaggart could not do anything because he wasn't prepared. He did not have any knowledge, neither in Christianity nor in Islam. So he was totally knocked out. A couple of years later, there was another debate with a, a missionary called Anis Sharush. Palestinian evangelist came with the purpose of throwing misconceptions and doubts in the hearts of Muslims, not to reach the truth. So he came prepared and he bombarded Sheikh Ahmed in half an hour with like 50 doubtful things of Islam. And every Muslim was, huh? Um, <coughs> these things are, yeah, I never thought of that. Why is Islam is like that? Why Islam is like this? So 50 shubuha, throwing them, bombarding the sheikh. When the sheikh came to rebuttal, he had only 30 minutes, and that would suffice to respond to one or two issues. What about the rest? It's all down the drain. It's all in the hearts of the Muslims who watch these debates and caused many of them to doubt their Islam because there was not enough time to respond. Every single doubtful matter could have been addressed, but the time was not sufficient. This is why Ahlus Sunnati wal Jama'ah refuse strongly to debate the people of innovation or to meet them. For the fear that Allah may, or for the fear that this may be causing confusion to the Muslims and for the fear of their hearts, for their hearts, that shaitan may throw something that would corrupt their hearts. So you have to definitely stop watching. I was just, before I, I, I came here, with a brother from America in a counseling session. And he was telling me, Sheikh, I'm practicing, I pray on time, but I was so addicted to watching debates, now my iman is not the same. Now I'm thinking, anytime the Sheikh says a hadith, I criticize the hadith in my head and I say, maybe it's not true. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that. And this is the end result, which would most likely lead a person to hypocrisy, doubting his own religion. So definitely you have to stop this. And if you have any doubts about something you heard in a debate, 
never go and address the close ones to you, your siblings, your friends, your relatives, because you'll confuse them and lead them to doubting Islam. Go to a sheikh and state to him your doubt to relieve you from your confusion, and inshallah, he will do that for you. I mean